And that I think not only is it for the betterment of yourself, but it's the, for the betterment of society. We need historians. We need certain majors that may not make as much money. I think those are for the betterment of society. Would you agree that there's some majors that may not make money, but are still essential well, to it, society? It depends. Do you think that getting a degree in gender studies is good for society? Uh, I would agree, yeah. Why, yeah. why would studying gender not be good for society? Well, learning that men can give birth is not exactly a good use of time. Do you, I think All right. <clears throat> I'm going to pause this right there. Let me actually turn the AC off because I'm going to get into it. So <clears throat> this guy, his name is, let me see, I think Charlie, Charlie Kirk, I believe it was. Yeah, Charlie Kirk. So he made a point. The prompt was, is college a scam? And of course, the liberal college students um, are, you know, we're going against him. It's versus one. He is the one they're going against. And he made a point saying he didn't say what well, he did basically is implying that studying something like gender studies is not bettering society because all that it's teaching you is about how men can give birth and i just want to debunk that first of all because i am a women's gender sexuality studies major i used to be a psychology major but i switched to wigs or women's gender sexuality studies or let's just say gender studies right because that's essentially what i'm studying but we don't i don't think i've ever had a course where They've taught us about how men can give birth. Um, I don't think that's ever, that's not really the point of, you know, studying women and gender sexuality studies or studying gender studies. That's not the point. The point is to help you critically think, to be able to analyze media, to be, uh, uh, to be able to analyze different outlets, you know what I mean, in different places in the world and just be able to see things through one is a queer lens to a intersectionality lens. Um, and that, that leads me to a point about how he was saying that, what good is it for a law, a lawyer, a person studying law, a law major to be able to take a gender sexuality studies uh, course? Because a lot of lawyers, I believe it's a, it's a requirement if you're going to be a lawyer to take one of those courses. And I just want to say personally, I think it's it's immensely important for you to study gender studies or take at least some courses if you're going to be a lawyer, because a lot of the times intersectionality is brought up. And these lawyers don't even know what that is because they have not taken the time to actually study the differences in gender, the differences in how, because look, when you study gender, you're not just learning about boy, girl, no, you're learning about how different groups based upon their gender expression, their outward expression to the world, how does society treat them? How are they viewed? What do they get because of, the, of their gender and what don't they get? You, you, are, you are seeing the power dynamics, right? Because essentially, when you are a man, you're seen as a man, you're perceived as a man, you are man, you fit that norm of being a man, you get power. When you are seen as a woman and a female and you know what I mean, all those characteristics are tied to you and that's how people perceive you, you, most for the most part, you don't have the same power in the way that a man would have power. Even though know, if you're seen as a woman or any type of femaleness, anyone smells it on you or they can see it on you, um, you're seen as weak, you're seen as inferior, um, a lot of the same opportunities that the norm, which is like cis white men would have, you just aren't given those opportunities. And intersectionality, right? Say you're a lawyer and someone comes to you with a, this is actually something that happened. There was a, a whole, we learned about this. It was a whole lecture. It was a whole like study point because there was a lawyer and there was a case appointed to the lawyer or the judge, whatever the, the, the prosecutor, I'm not, I don't have those exact terms, but you understand what I'm trying to say. Um, there was a case appointed to them and it was a black woman who was saying that she had been discriminated against. And she was saying that she was discriminated against, not because, uh, she was just a black, a black person, but because she was a black woman, because she saw her black male, uh, counterparts getting these jobs, getting opportunities, but she didn't see any black women getting these opportunities. And she did. She saw, she saw men, right? She saw black men. Okay. She saw white women getting these jobs. She saw white women getting these jobs, non people of color. She saw them getting the jobs, right? So you're seeing black men getting the jobs and you're seeing women getting the jobs. You bring this case to the lawyer, the lawyer or the judge or whatever is like, well, this can't be a case of you being black. And this can't be a case of you being a woman because I see black guys getting the job. And this can't be a case of you being a woman because I see white women getting the job. But intersectionality is, it's not the fact that she's just a black person. And it's not the fact that she's just a woman. It's the fact that she's a black woman. You see what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? You, you might see black men in a field, but you might not see black women. And that has to do with intersectionality. It's because, not because they are black. It's because they are black. Well, it is, but it's because they're a black and a woman. You want to say what I'm trying to say? 
Anyways, I know this, what I'm explaining, because I've learned intersectionality and what that means. Intersectionality is like the basis of understanding the world and different perspectives through a queer lens or through a gender studies lens. And a lot of people don't have that ability. A lot of people see everything as so black, white, right? They see everything as men, boys like this, girls like this, blah, 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 but we don't actually see why these things are and we can't actually unpack the things because we just see it as society has given it to us to see. You know, people think, oh yeah, boys like blue. Like, why don't we think about why boys are conditioned to like blue in the first place? Like, there's literally boxes that society has put us into and if we don't question them and if we don't have knowledge on these things, then we're just going to keep living in these binary boxes that are very trapping and limiting to everyone. And I, I think... You know, what I've also learned in my gender studies class is that, you know, women, black women, Asian women, men, trans people, gay people, straight people, we will not ever be free from the constraints of gender, of gender norms and expectations if we are not all free. So a lot of people think, oh, go and study, go and study your gender studies class, go and study about gay people. Ah, if we don't all collectively have an interest, I'm not saying you have to go be a gender studies major, but at least take a class, at least read up, at least research, at least hear people like um, liberals out or people like me, people that have an open mind about things, at least hear us out because this world is not going to get better if we are all constrained to this social, con socially constructed boxes of gender and ways of life how we're supposed to live and it goes beyond just and this is just gender studies gives you a lens to look through and see life it's not even just about your gender it can even go we even learn things it's as deep as if you just believe what society has told you you're probably going to live your life being unconscious and not actually you know being mindful and present in the life that you are given and and and, and put on this earth to live you know if you just believe that yes you know you you work, you, you go, you go to high school, you go to college, you get that job and you just mind your business until you retire and then you die. If that's how you want to live, fine. But that's what society has told us that we have to do to be good citizens, right? You have to go to college. You have to learn this. You have to learn that. You can't, you can't, don't talk back. Vote for, the, vote for the president and sh and be quiet and just be a good citizen. No, you know, there's other routes. Like I'm in college and I've made this choice to go to college, not so much just for the fact that I want to get a job. Getting a job is cool and all, but I'm really trying to just expand my own mind and learn. Just learn because... You know, college can just be a route for you to make more money, but you learn so much. Like, it's just a lot that you can take away and you can't unlearn these things. Like, this, these perspectives that I've gained from college, they've stuck with me. I can't just unlearn them. That is something that is, you can't, you can't buy that. Like, it, you, I mean, I guess you could buy a college degree, but you can't, you can't replicate that. You can go into your own research, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, even somebody like this guy, Charlie, if you're watching this, Charlie Kirk, even someone like you with such education, you've done your own research, you know all these facts, you can tell, you can tell me who the 22nd president of the United States was, but you lack the, the deep understanding and critical analysis and thinking to actually be able to see life in a different lens than your own. And I think that's something that is very valuable, right? You know, even me, I can hear someone like Charlie speak and I, and I even agree with him on some of his points that he was saying because I can, I can, I can uh, put down my, my guard and instead of being like, oh, I'm just going to be defensive and just, you know, drill my point, drill my point, drill my point. Like, no, it's supposed to be a discussion. Um, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't fear putting my myself on mute for a, for a second to hear out someone else's point because you just may agree with what they're saying. And a lot of the times the other side, they, they don't have the skill. They don't have the skill to, to, to put that in action. I believe that's a skill to be able to actively listen to somebody else and hear their point without you being ready to clap back about your point. Um, I think that is, that is a very, very, very important skill that a lot of people are lacking and school helps with that. I think school helps with that, right? You're not going to pass a class if you just hold on to your understanding and you don't let the teacher teach you. If you don't let the material enlighten you, if you don't, if you are not willing to be enlightened, you will never be enlightened. And that's another thing. You cannot force somebody to be enlightened. If you don't want to be enlightened, you will just not be enlightened. And there's just situations where a lot of people just don't want to be enlightened. They just don't have any desire to learn anything new. They're stuck on how they believe and it's just forever not changing. And I'm not that rigid with my life. I'm just not. But I really wanted to make this just to get that point across that gender studies allows me to speak like this and to have critical thinking and see things through a different lens that is not just, you know, very rigid, very straight, very closed off and, and very just limiting, to be honest. 
I pretty much said everything I have to say. Charlie, Mr. Charlie Kirk, I don't hate you. And I think hate is not going to get us anywhere. But I just pray and I hope, you know, you're a man of God. Just try to see things through other people's lenses, right? This is not an attack. I'm not here to attack you. I'm just trying to give you some perspective. You know, you made that, you made that very vague general assessment of what you think gender studies is and as a gender studies major i just had to speak up and tell you what we're really about and this is just like i said this is my second year i didn't even say that but this is my second year i've taken gender studies classes before but now i'm really this is my first semester fully all my classes are gender studies i'm full throttle in it and i just really need to say that because you know it's it's much deeper it's much much deeper than what people think we tell someone I'm studying gender studies, you immediately think, oh, they're studying just gay people. It's not necessarily what it is. You know, we do study aspects of how lesbians um, are in culture and in media and the representation and uh, what what they've done to change the direction of things or just their impact. Uh, you do talk about gay people, but that's not the f core focus of these courses. Um, a lot of it is definitely based in feminism and un, un, unlearning a lot of these default settings that we've been given by society. So, yeah, I understand, you know, people have their own viewpoints, but there's nothing wrong with opening your mind and learning something new. So, yeah, I just want to leave you guys with that. Hopefully you found this helpful. I need, to, I need to get this off my chest because I watched that debate and a lot of the, the liberal students that were coming up and speaking, they did have very good points, but it is different arguing against i don't know how old charlie is i'm not even gonna guess me yeah i don't know i don't even want to guess but <clears throat> older gentlemen older gentlemen um definitely had experience in those type of very pressurized on the spot you know um just had a lot of uh, uh experience in those settings and then to be debating against a college student that maybe hasn't wasn't on the debate team wasn't in those fields they're just speaking from their points of wherever they're at um with their knowledge or whatever they know it's going to be a you know a very different um a very different how do i say it's going to be a very different delivery from both sides charlie's delivery is going to be one way very maybe polished very clean versus you know the liberal students that are just speaking with with passion but maybe don't have all the language to make it sound as refined and 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 polished as charlie so i also keep that in mind it's not that the other side didn't know what to say or didn't know how to say i think it's just a lack of you know, that skill but that was honestly beautiful um my hat goes off to y'all because you did stand your ground and i know i know what's in your like i could tell what's in your hearts what you're saying uh some of y'all were kind of crazy uh it does sometimes get very yelly and you know i think that is passion but at the end of the day we have to keep our dignity and if we want to be represent if we want to be the representation of you know the other side the liberal side the more free thinking side we have to you know maintain our dignity and not yell at the other side that's not going to help somebody else uh, understand us as as you may see uh i don't think charlie yelled one time and i do give him props for that because when you hold your dignity and you don't get loud, it just shows that I know what I'm talking about. I don't have to scream it to you for you to understand. I can calmly just speak to you and, you know, get my point across. But, yeah, I'm at the park. The sun is kind of going down. It's about 3.30. I'm going to go see what else I'm going to do with my day. But I appreciate you guys for watching. And I hope this was helpful in some capacity. So, peace.